welcome to episode three of the Autograph University Masterclass. I'm Matt Raymond. This is the web show for autograph collectors where we bring in experts and industry insiders to help you improve your autograph collection and meet celebrities. We have a great guest on today's episode. Mark Cooper is a Florida-based grapher, a veteran of autograph collecting for many years, and he's a teacher, so we're going to be his students today. He's going to talk about spring training autograph tips. He's also going to touch on how his day job actually helps him get autographs. So let's get to it. Welcome to the Autograph University Masterclass. I'm Matt Raymond. We have an excellent guest on today's episode. He is a veteran grapher, a man tall in stature, and how fitting. He's a teacher, Professor Mark Cooper. Welcome to the Autograph University Masterclass. Thank you for having me. So for those of you uh, watching and listening that don't know a little bit about Mark, Mark, can you tell us a little bit you know, about your background, how you got into graphing, you know, what keeps you motivated to still get out there several times a week? Well, that's a tough question. Um, I started graphing in the early 1980s, and I can't pinpoint the very first autograph I got, but I do know that it was between two people. It was Manny Trio on a baseball card, and I believe this was at the old Riverfront Stadium in Cincinnati. Um, I believe I was with my grandparents. And I also got Dick Schofield. I shouldn't say Dick Schofield. I got Bob Feller at a 1982 nice. Dance Sons game. Uh, he signed a program for me, which I still have. Excellent. So was that, you know, how did that grow into, you know, a hobby, you know, an obsession, if that's true, yeah, that's uh, true. you know, 30 years later still, um, you know, still going out and graphing? Well, um, my family moved to South Florida in 1982, uh, 84, and at that time there were baseball teams everywhere for spring training. Um, actually, the my very first day of fifth grade after uh, my family moved down here, my grandpa had called my fifth grade teacher and asked for permission for me to miss school. Uh. It's a Texas Rangers Cincinnati Reds spring training game, and that was when Pete Rose was still managing the Reds. And back then, uh, the the old stadium where the Rangers were was just overly accessible. Mm -hmm. I mean, no security anywhere. You could walk right up to the players, and it was a great experience. I mean. Growing up down here in South Florida as a baseball fan, it was heaven for me. Awesome. So you mentioned the locale. You're down there soaking up the rays while we're still digging out of a blizzard. So tell me about what the, uh, what the scene is like down there in South Florida. Uh, well, it's very competitive. Um, a lot of people want, want information, and a lot of times that isn't um, something I can give out. Um, I like to share as much as I can, um, but a few of the people that I run with, I mean, it's just not something I can do. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, ve like, it's very, very competitive. Um, there's always stuff going on. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, right now, it, it's insane. In the last two weeks, I mean, I'm just, a, you know, I'm just happy that none of this has affected my job. <laughs> yeah. So how do you... Um... You're, and you're a teacher, so talk to me about how you're balancing, you know, being a, you know being a teacher, you know, social life, graphing, you know, other than summer's free to graph, right? Correct. It sounds I mean, like yeah. the dream job for for a grapher. Yeah. Um. You know, there's a lot of things that go on during the school day that I just let go. Sure. I ra I rarely take off work to to graph. I mean, I I, I sort of think that that's that's a little silly. Um, mm -hmm. actually, last year I took a day off for Kofax, and uh, I think that was worth it. Sure, <laughs> it's be right up there on that level for me to take off work. Uh, in terms of a social life, um, uh, I, I don't know. I don't really like to admit this, but um, I've you know, I've broken up with different girls I've dated because. Um, either I graph too much or I go to too many baseball games. Wow. Yeah. Back, right after I graduated college, um, it was it was approaching February, and I, you know, she wanted me to to make a decision, either her or baseball, and I said, well, that's an easy one. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, you know, I, I definitely feel those pains as well. Um, you know, uh, you know, my my wife has tolerated this hobby, and she said. 
you know, get it in now because when the baby comes, you know, it's going to be all over. And, and the baby came eight months ago, um, and it's been pretty lean since then. Um, well, congratulations. So, oh, thank you. Uh, yeah, it's definitely, definitely a challenge. So you mentioned, um, you know, your early years of spring training. I know that um, you know, you've been at least a couple times this year and, and, you know, more active in years past. If you were teaching a class and we were the students on graphing spring training, you know, what are some of those lessons that you can pass down to us? Because I, I know, you know, some of the folks, especially here in the Northeast where we want to escape the cold and, and head down to Florida or Arizona, you know, we read these stories online of just people getting, you know, huge numbers from spring training. It seems like that's when the players are most generous. But it can also be, you know, kind of an intimidating environment. There's a lot of people. It's kind of disorganized. Players are kind of everywhere, but you have to know where to go. You know, what's your advice, you know, for someone kind of jumping in? Well, I would definitely go to those places that uh, aren't too popular. Um, I, I don't like having to battle crowds. Um, so, I mean, let's say Scottsdale for the Giants, you know, go there on an off day. You'll get a lot of the stars who are staying back. Um, I just try to just try to stay away from the crowds. I mean, I look at Camelback right now, and I mean, people are getting Kofax, but it's insane out there. There's so many stars and just people everywhere. I guess in my older years, I, I just I'm trying to avoid that. <laughs> sure. So it sounds like you know we've heard this before. You know, it it really come and I think in any any environment, whether it's spring training or you know, going to a hotel or somewhere else, it, it really comes down to, you know, risk and reward. I mean, if you're going for a big name, you're probably going to see a big crowd there. And, you know, your chances are probably going to be lower um, as opposed to going to, you know, a place that's less popular um, where you may get bigger numbers, but you may not get that big name. Is that, you know, is that fair assessment? I would agree with that. I mean, sometimes you have to battle the crowds, but I try to I try to stay away, you know, if at all possible. You know, I think uh, information is the most important thing in this hobby, and um, I just think that you need to get better information. Going to a ballpark these days is not the not the place to go for an autograph. Mm -hmm. Can you talk about in general? You know, I don't want to you know to put you in a spot to release any trade secrets or you know sources of information but you know in general like how do you keep track of what's going on down there because there is so much you know going on in south florida well i had a date book um but now i just use my my iphone all right and everything's in my iphone and i'm constantly uh deleting um items uh, it works pretty well for me I, I mean i feel privileged in a way because i have a journalism background and I know a lot of people in the business, and um, I, I, I keep up to date with, with everything that's going on in the sports world, and I, I know a lot of people, and they tip me off to certain things, so that's really helped me over the years. I, I mean, I think that you really have to be aware of what's going on. Yeah, definitely. I want to touch on uh, one of the activities that you do, uh, consignment. That may be a new term for a lot of the folks that are watching and listening to this. Um, but it may be, you know, it's, I view it as an opportunity for, you know, some people, you know, that, you know, don't live in these hubs. I mean, I'm in the Boston area. You know, we've talked to some people in, you know, New, you know, New York, L.A., also in New England where it's accessible. But, you know, there are a lot of collectors, especially ones that are doing TTM, you know, that are not around a hub. And consignment may be a way for them to get some of the items done that, you know, they couldn't otherwise buy you know, using someone like you who is, you know, has the access. Can you talk about what consignment is and, and you know, kind of what that process is? Well, um, I see a lot of the same people over and over, and, you know, there's only so many graphs of a certain player I need. So someone will send me their item um, with a self-addressed stamped envelope, and I'll handle it with care just like I would my item, and then when I get it signed, I send it back. Uh, I think that I really would prefer to do a trade you know, because I like to add stuff to my collection, you know, from guys that I don't see. But a lot of times, I mean, the only thing we can really come up with is 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 consignment, and you know, it helps me out a little bit as a teacher. So th there's a there's a is a price involved. I mean, it's nowhere near what you would pay at a public or a private signing. 
you know, but there's a, you know, there's a cost involved to get the, uh, yeah, get I, the auto, I, I, autograph. I mean, I, I go to eBay sometimes just to see what the, the autograph's going for, mm -hmm. um, and then I always take a little bit off that. Um, I've come to realize that it, it's really fifty percent of what an athlete would charge at a, at a, at a show. Mm -hmm. that's, that's pretty much what it comes out to. Mm -hmm. And it really comes down to, you know, you doing the legwork and the travel and, you know, gas and stuff like that. Yeah, I uh, think a lot of times, at least in the beginning, I didn't value my time as much as I really should have. Mm -hmm. So I I might be a little bit more than other people, but that's just because I value my time and. If I'm going to go out and get an autograph for someone, it's got to be worth my while. Sure. Um, going back to you being a teacher, and I've, I've, it comes up a lot in the stories that I read. I mean, you post on Sports Graphing and SportsCollectors.net, um, which if you follow Autograph Universe, you've heard me um, over and over again You know, encourage people to sign up for those forums just because they're great sources of information and networking with people. Um, but you know, being a teacher, um, you know, has been, you know, an element of the stories that you write, and you use it as a way, um, from time to time, to differentiate yourself from, you know, those, de you know, from from being a dealer, which is a stereotype that I think a lot of us deal with. Um, I think you know, people very frequently. I mean, I'm, you know, I'm 31 years old, and when you see a 31 year old guy or a 40 year old guy or whoever. It, you know, I understand why people may peg us as a dealer because we use blue sharpies and we have nice items. Can you talk about? Uh, I know you had a very recent success with Cheryl Crow, which is a really tough autograph, um, and it sounded like you know you kind of, you know, being a teacher, communicating that helped you out. Yeah, I just started. I just started using that recently, but I think uh, I get hit with the eBay label so much that I felt like I had to come back with something to overcome it, and that's worked really well. I mean, actually, the person I run with has encouraged me to start bringing my teacher ID with me. And even tonight, I met Ziggy Marley, and I had to use the same thing. I mean, I couldn't go to the show, but, you know, once I told him I was a teacher, and I think he believed me, I mean, that softened him up a little bit. Excellent. Um, so, looking back on the last, you know, 30 years or so graphing. We have a lot of um, Autograph University uh, readers, people who are watching and listening to this and may just be starting out. You know, what are some of those th things, tips that you wish you knew back then? You talk about, you know, you value your time more. It sounds like you're being more selective in who you go for. Um, what, you know, what are those things that you wish you knew, you know, even 10 years ago that, you know, would have saved you some headaches or wasted time? Well, there's, that's a great question. Uh, number one, I don't think I would have gotten so many baseball cards signed. <laughs> I you think I would have. with a storage issue? <laughs> well, not only that, but I, I look at all the great autographs I have on baseball cards, and I just think to myself, what a waste. Yeah. Uh, number two, uh, I think you need to graph people who have an effect on you. Mm -hmm. Someone who has maybe influenced you or, or just had some kind of effect on your life. Um, just getting autographs of everybody who walks by, that doesn't, that doesn't really do much. But I need to be able to look at it and, and say, oh, yeah, I went for that autograph because. Sure, um, you want to have a story attached to that. It's, you know, it's not just another card or photo or you know, ball to throw you know, with the rest of them. Uh, I, mean, I mean, I also you know, look, look I, I, actually, I attended a, Ted Williams, a, a free Ted Williams signing one time. Wow. And I was 20, 21 years old, and he would have signed as many things as I put in front of him, but I, I, I didn't know any better. I was naive. I didn't, have, I didn't have anything for him to sign. And, you know, things like that are always going to happen, and I don't really regret that because I look at all the autographs I get now, mm -hmm. and I never would have gotten any of the autographs I get now if I was graphing the way I did 20 years ago. I mean, I'm getting things now that I never would have gotten before, so yeah. I don't really have any regrets, but... I mean, you know, look back at, you know, things like that with Ted Williams and such. I mean, every now and then you wonder, you know, what if, but. Yeah, it makes me think, uh, I mean, you know, when I was a kid, you know, 10, 11 years old, kind of my, my special birthday thing was my dad would take me to a card show, you know, up here. I grew up in Worcester, so, you know, somewhere, in, you know, in, in central Massachusetts, we'd go to some holiday inn or, or whatever, and. 
from time to time hit one of the shows that had some autograph guests. And I remember, you know, looking and, you know, maybe it was 40 or 50 bucks to get a, you know, a Willie Mays or some big name. And I was like, oh, let me buy a, a set of 84 tops for $80 instead, because that's going to be, you know, the investment. Um, and I'm definitely feeling those pains now and, and asking myself, what if? So I think we all have that, that story, um, you know, for those folks that, you know, grew, but I think grew that, up in the 80s and 90s. I think that makes you the grapher you are, though, because everybody, everybody goes through that. Yeah. So last thing I want to ask you is, um, I mean, I'm, I'm always curious about, you know, the folks that have been graphing forever. I mean, you're, you know, an expert of experts, you, you know, when you're looking at this year, 2013, um, you know, what, what do you have left to do? I mean, who's on your target list? Is there any, you know, do you have any autograph related resolutions about, um, you know, the time you're spent doing it, this or going, you know, more quantity, uh, quality over quantity? Uh, you know, what, you know, what does the next year look like uh, for you? What are your, you know, main goals well i'd like to meet paul mccartney that's always been a goal of mine and i think he's going to be here soon so hopefully i can cross that one off my list excellent <clears throat> i'd also like oh well I, I you can never meet sandy koufax enough so that's always on my list and of course i'd like to get a michael jordan but if i never get michael jordan i don't really have a problem with that i mean mccartney and, and koufax are my two number ones right now i mean there are certain things i, I don't concern myself with anymore including tiger woods you know, I really don't care about the guy. <laughs> sure. So, but well, Mark, my favorite autograph right now, and I, I can never get enough of Jack Nicholas. Mm -hmm. So I mean, and I'm fortunate that he lives near me, and I see him a lot. So I, I just get as many nice items signed by Jack as possible. Mark, thank you so much for joining us. You dropped a lot of great knowledge. I know uh, the people who are watching and listening. Um, you know, have a lot of great takeaways and in, in, in notes out of this. Um, so thanks again for joining us on the Autograph University Masterclass. Thanks for having me, Matt. Well, that's today's show. Huge thanks to Mark Cooper for coming on. Tons of great info. You can connect with him on Twitter at PSUGator02. I know he'd love to hear from you, and I'd love to hear from you. So whether you're watching this on Autograph University, YouTube, listening on iTunes, would love to get a comment from you. Let us know how we're doing. Leave an iTunes review. Really appreciate it. Head on over to AutographU.com and check out all the resources available to you to help educate you about autograph collecting and join the community. Sign up for our newsletter at AutographU.com slash newsletter. Never miss a thing. Always be on top of every new episode of the Autograph University Masterclass. Thank you so much for joining us. Anytime you have a question, feel free to reach out to me. Love hearing from you guys and happy to help. Until next time. Be well and let the ink flow.